Hello, my darlings. It's Zui here, and today I've wrote another Bakugo story for you. This one took me long to write because, well, it's Trials in, uh, in Destiny at the moment, and uh, I really want a God Roll Summoner. So uh, let's quickly get this over with. But before we get right into it, I would like to remind you to like, comment, subscribe and watch the video until the end. You can also dislike. This is the best way you can support me. Of course, you could also support me directly by simply donating to my Patreon or buying something off of my merch store. Both links are down in the description. Anyways, let's get right into the story. Kachonk, Kachonk, Kachonk. Principal Nezu has been added for about six minutes now, stamping document after document. You didn't even realize he needed to stamp so many. This really was a more complex situation than you could have ever anticipated. Yet you couldn't shake the need to flinch whenever the harsh monotone clong occurred. Occasionally, he would hand you over a paper to sign, which was then followed by another clonk. You looked at the clock behind your principal. By now it were ten minutes. And finally your nerves gave out, and you shakily asked, P principal why do we need to sign so many documents? He gave you a warm smile. Moving a general study student to a higher class requires multiple OK letters to avoid sending an unfit student into a course where they... He paused as he realized what he was about to say. After ten seconds of uncomfortable silence, we just couldn't find the right words, Nettle simply decided to be blunt. What pass away due to their lack of physical ability? You whimpered. Also, I need to send out letters informing any hero agency that is under contract of our move so they can consider you for a future internship. He blinked before adding, Of course that rarely occurs, unless given a recommendation. But once in a while an agency will just read the school notes we send to them and be interested. And you look down at your hands. So, when can I go? The red man scratched his neck before simply stating, When the second period starts, yeah, I think that's when we're done. Don't worry, by then you have homeroom, so you can be immediately introduced to your new teacher. Your fuzzy principal wasn't lying. The bell had just rung for the beginning of the second period, when finally you left his office. He had simply given you a formal letter to give to the teacher before sending you outside. The anxiety you felt in this moment seemed to make you hyper-aware of your surroundings. Any noise you made felt as if it was deafeningly loud. Part of you wished you could simply go back to your dorm room, pack your stuff, move to the new dorm room and then get to meet your new classmates one by one as they returned from their classes. To at least spare you having all their eyes put on you simultaneously. As you ascend the stairs to your new class, each step felt as if it required more of your strength to push through. Why did it have to be you and not Shinzo? Water began filling your eyes. So once you reached the top, you quickly dodged to the right into the bathrooms. You huddled inside one of the stalls, desperately trying to normalize your breathing. You checked your phone for the time. Bad mistake. The time you were right now wasting was making this worse. So your current objective first switched from calm down to at least stop crying. About half of second period had passed when you finally had the courage to gently knock on the door of your new class. As expected, all eyes were on you once a deep voice called you in. Yes? You stared at the floor while slowly approaching the teacher, giving him the letter Nezu had given you. Of course you knew the guy. He was infamous for kicking out any student he didn't like. 
While reading, he kept glancing up to you from time to time. What was he thinking about? A part of you imagined he would just crumble up the note and then send you back to the general studies course. But that was not going to happen. He walked the two steps over to his desk and sat down, burying his face in between his hands with a groan. Then he took a deep breath and walked to the door. Thought this was tomorrow, was all he said before leaving the class. There were whispers in the class, but you couldn't bear to look. So who the fuck are you? shouted the creepy blonde guy who almost accidentally killed you during the big race by blowing up one of the robots that almost fell on you. I... I... I am... The door suddenly flung open. There stood your teacher with a very cold expression. Everyone in your sports uniforms. Now... He barked. More whispers followed, accompanied with the scratching noise of chairs moving. And you? The scary teacher pointed at you. You're going to give us a little demonstration. If I don't like what I see, you get your ass back to general studies. Upon hearing that, the whispering turned louder, and you could make out words out of the soup of voices. That girl was in general studies? I hope she sits next to me. She's cute. Shush, Minella. When your girlfriend hears about this, she'll kill her and make you watch it. Did he just say back to general studies? <laughs> he said as. Ten minutes later, you found yourself inside one of U.S. gyms. As a general studies student, you never seen one of them from the inside. It didn't even look like a gym. It looked like a mountain, with pillars of pure stone reaching up to the ceiling. You stood next to Mr. Aizawa, your teacher, while the class had built a half circle around you. Name... Silence. A girl with rosy cheeks quietly said, He wants you to tell us your hero name. You blushed and looked onto the ground. Uh... Hi. My name is Proxy. Most general studies students didn't have hero names, and you quickly needed to come up with it while you were signing the papers Nezu was giving you. Quirk, groaned your teacher annoyed. It's... it's called... Shit, you forgot the name of your own quirk. It's... Aizawa sighed. A quirk is called Sweet Lenore, and is going to make all your lives much, much easier. Which is why she's going to move to Class 1A. You whimpered. <laughs> Never more. <laughs> Chuckled the creepy blonde guy. And you blushed. Well then, looks like we already have a candidate. Bakugo, come over here. You're gonna be our guinea pig. The blonde stomped next to you. You risked a glance. He looked so much bigger than you. So, like, do the thing and then we see what happens. Aizawa took a step back with the class. Bakugo gave you a dumbfounded look. So what now? He barked. Could... He started. Could you turn around, please? And... Lower yourself a little. He gave you an angry grimace. I'm not your fucking slave! You took a startled step back. And something in his eyes changed. He sighed. Fine. He turned around and got on his knees. Hot now. You walked closer to him until you could feel the heat radiating off of his body and then snaked your arms around his shoulders. <gasps> oh! He gasped. What's wrong, Kachan? shouted a green-haired boy from the group of people standing a few meters away from you two. This power! He shouted. Quickly he stood up, leaving you clutching onto him. If you let go of me, I'll kill you. Really? 
he whimpered. It was as if someone had kicked him in the stomach. So far, the only people who believed his threats were children. And in those cases, he wanted to make them cry. But now, he actually felt a little bad. Just don't let go, idiot! Somehow, him saying idiot didn't feel like an insult. He raised both hands in front of himself and shouted, die. And for a moment, less than a second, all you could see was white. And then smoke followed by noises of breaking stone and crumbling rocks. Even the lights in the gym had gotten out. You looked back at your class. Aizawa was unfazed, zipping orange juice out of the box with a plastic straw, while your entire class had their mouths agape in shock. You looked back onto the devastation. There, where just moments ago stood a large stone pillar, was now nothing but shattered rocks, steel sizzling from the heat. Slowly your class approached you and Bakugo, while Aizawa started explaining. Her quirk allows anyone she embraces to unleash the full potential of the quirk for as long as she can stay conscious. Bakugo set you back on the ground, your legs feeling like jelly. This was awesome, shouted Bakugo. Wait, what do you mean conscious? asked the green-haired boy. Look at her, scoffed your teacher. I, I'm fine, you stuttered. You felt spent. While she powers you up, her small body takes the brunt of your physical exhaustion, so right now... She feels like Katsuki would if he was to unleash that attack right now without her. You felt like a ton of bricks, and your hands hurt as if you had boiled them for ten minutes. You felt tears running down your face. It hurt a lot. How you managed to not immediately start sobbing out loud was a mystery to you. Dude, I bet I can summon a thunderstorm with her! Shot another blonde guy with the excitement of a child. And what makes her think she would work with any of you extras? Suddenly his large hand hit your back, almost sending you flying to the ground. Uh, you okay? Asked Bakugo. You didn't realize he was incapable of sounding so... caring. If you work with him, however... This would mean that you would have to interact with less people. Before we raise the building, I think this is enough for a demonstration. Back to class, everyone. Tanya, Yayuruzu, you two go get a spirit disc. With a racing heart, you trotted behind Bakugo as you walked back to class. <laughs>